Hi there, I'm Grant Skinner, and I'm really excited to talk to you today about Flutter Animate. It's a library I've been working on for a while that makes it really easy to add beautiful animation to Flutter UI. I run a company called G Skinner. You may have seen some of the showcases that we've built, such as Flutter Folio, Flutter Vignettes, Flock, and the Wondrous app. And if you've checked these out, you've probably noticed that we really love animation. The challenge though, is that while animation in Flutter is very powerful, it can also be very verbose to work with. For example, if I wanted to take this hello world text and just add it in a fade and a nice slide, you'd think that would be very simple. But by the time I was done, I would have something that looks like this, which is a lot of code and requires a fair amount of re-architecture. Now there are some simpler, more concise ways to do this in Flutter, but they all come with their challenges. And I really believe that animation should be fun. It should be something that you can easily add, play around with, refine, and if it's not working, it should be really easy to discard as well, to get rid of. Ultimately, it should be an intuitive layer on top of your UI code, basically the frosting on top of your cupcake. So when we started looking at building the Wondrous app about a year ago, we realized that we wanted a lot of rich animation. And one of my devs came to me and said, hey, is there any way that we can make it this simple? So I thought about it for a while, I wrote some tests, and ultimately I wound up building Flutter Animate. It's currently on version 2.1, it's available on PubDev, and it's completely open source and transparently developed. So let's take a look at working with Flutter Animate. It's really simple. It comes with a bunch of pre-built effects, everything from move and fade through to color effects, blur and shadows. And they're really easy to apply. For example, I have this simple widget and I wanna make it animate. All I do is I wrap it in an animate widget and then I can specify a list of effects that I want to apply. For example, a fade effect. You can see it running on the right hand side or a slide effect. Perfect. One of the cool things about Flutter Animate is it actually lets you do this in two different ways. You can use this nested widget approach or you can take advantage of extension methods. For example, my widget .animate .fade .slide and hey, .shake. Now I really like this syntax because I think it's a little bit more concise and it really keeps the focus on the UI code instead of on my animation. But you can use whichever one you prefer. The other little advantage to this syntax is it includes some semantic shortcuts. So for example, I could fade out, or I could fade in, I could slide X, or I could slide Y. But again, all this capability is available in either syntax. Now, the default behaviors of each effect might not be exactly what you want. So you're able to configure how effects behave. I could set this shake to run really fast or really slow. Most effects also have a begin and an end value. So I could make this slide start at twice its height. Or I could make it end there. Begin and end are smart in that if you only provide one, it'll automatically use a neutral value for the other one. I also want to be able to manipulate the timing of my effects. So for example, I could specify a longer duration, like a thousand milliseconds. You'll notice that we've added extensions to number to make it easier to define these durations. I could add a delay. So for example, pause for half a second before running. And I could add a curve. So 
you can see it slow down at the end of the animation. Now these timing parameters are actually inherited by subsequent effects, which is why my shake and my slide have remained in sync with my fade. But I can override these values for each effect. So for example, say I wanted my slide to start halfway through my fade. I could delay it by 500 milliseconds. So you can see I fade part way in and then my slide begins. This allows us to really choreograph complex animations. And there's a special effect that actually helps with this as well, called then. Basically all then does is it sets its inheritable delay to the time of the end of the previous animation. So for example, it will set its delay to 1000 milliseconds, which is when this fade ends. This causes the slide to begin immediately after the fade ends. Similarly, I could add a then here, and all three of my effects will run in sequence. Let's take a look at a real world example. On Wondrous, we have collectibles scattered throughout the application, and we wanted an animation that would tease the user to interact with them. While looking at this animation, I figured to implement it, I would break it into three separate effects. A shimmer, a shake, and a scale effect that scales in, pauses, and then scales out. Let's look at some code. So I start with my collectible, and I tell it I want to animate. Then add a shimmer. In the application, the delay is actually four seconds, that it's not running all the time and it has a duration of 1.8 seconds. On top of that, I add a shake. The shake inherits the delay and the duration, and it introduces a new curve. Now I just need it to scale, which is a little bit more complicated. I wanted it to scale in for the first third of the animation, so I changed the duration to a third of the total. That gets my scale in, but now I need it to pause and scale out. So I added a then with a delay of another third of the time. I follow that with a scale out, which also inherits the 600 millisecond duration. So it scales in, pauses for 600 milliseconds, and then scales out. Awesome. The only thing that's missing now is that this isn't repeating. But to do that, we have to take a look at how to actually control our animations. There are a number of ways that you can control animations, but one of the most flexible ways is via the animation controller that's used internally by all animate instances. Here I have a warning animation that I want to loop. Inside of animate, I can add an on play parameter they will accept the controller and then manipulate it. So for example, I can tell it to repeat. So that's working pretty good, but I don't like how it resets at the beginning every time. So I can tell it I want it to reverse. And that gets me that nice pulse that I'm looking for. I don't want it to repeat infinitely either though. So we include an extension to animation controller called loop that works exactly the same as repeat, but it adds a count parameter. So if I say a count of four, it'll animate out, in, out, and then in again. So if I run that, out, in, out, in. Perfect. The other way that I can work with the animation controller is by specifying my own. So for example, I can say controller equals my controller. This allows me to retain the controller in my state and manipulate it whenever I want. Another way to control an animation is with an adapter. Adapters drive animations from external value providers. For example, a value notifier or a scroll controller. 
In this example, we're passing a list scroll controller into the scroll adapter and then using it to drive an animation. This synchronizes the animation with our scrolling. If you want your animation to react to state changes, this is actually really easy with the target parameter on animate. In this example, whenever I click this, it toggles animating between growing up and growing down. And it's really easy. Basically, I just have a gesture detector that on tap toggles this value between true and false. I then use this in the target parameter to change the value between zero and one. Now with target, zero corresponds to the beginning of the animation, one corresponds to the end of the animation. And whenever the value is changed, it'll automatically animate between those two positions. So in this case, when I click, it sets the target to one and animates the end. When I click again, it sets the value to zero and animates to the beginning. Really simple but we can go kind of crazy with it. So for example, I have this excessive thumb where when I roll over, a whole ton of stuff happens. In fact, a little bit too much stuff happens. But I wanted to show it to you because it's kind of interesting in how this single toggle of over can drive two different animations. I have one animation that's on my image with five different effects and I have another animation on my container, on the frame, which drives three different effects. So it's a little bit excessive, but it shows what you can do. As a last quick note, testing animations can be difficult. And one way to make it easier is with the animate.restart on hot reload global setting. This just means that every time while you're testing that you hot reload your application, all of the animations on screen will restart so that you can see them. You can turn this on and off. It has no impact on your production application. We've learned how to apply built-in effects, adjust them, and control them. But what if you want to do something completely unique? Well, if you want something that's reusable, you can create your own effect classes. This looks like a lot of code, but really most of it is just writing extension methods and dealing with parameters. Ultimately, all you need to do is extend the effect class and define a build method. It's pretty straightforward, and if you get lost, there's about 20 other effects that you can look at for reference. If you'd prefer to create something one-off, you can use custom effect. It's essentially an effect that uses a builder, allowing you to do whatever you'd like. In this case, I've implemented a star wipe. I added a custom effect with a duration and a curve, and then I defined a builder method that accepts a value and a child and simply constructs the effect that I want using those. As you'd expect, this can be layered with other effects as well. As an interesting side note, animate doesn't actually require a child. And this means that we can use a custom effect to drive the content that we're animating. In this case, I'm just doing a countdown from five to zero over the course of five seconds. And again, this can be layered with other effects to create a much more complex and rich animation. We're almost done, but I'd like to leave you with a few tips about performance. Animation always impacts performance, but there's a number of things we can do to minimize that. The first is to use repaint boundary. Simply wrap your animated content in a repaint boundary widget, and this tells Flutter to draw that content into an off-screen buffer and composite it back into the view. This minimizes how much of the view needs to be repainted every time that the animation updates. Another thing that we should try and do is to minimize idle animation or animation that's continuously playing. For example, in Wondrous, our collectible animation has a four second pause in it. The actual animation only runs for about two seconds. And that means for two thirds of the time, we're not doing any updates at all. This next tip might seem very self-evident, but we wanna reduce the complexity of our animations. 
eight separate effects for a single hover is kind of crazy. We want to try and do more with less. It's worth noting as well that certain types of effects like blurs or shadows can be more expensive than simpler effects like moves or rotations. Related to this, we want to exercise restraint overall. Not everything on the screen needs to be animated. You'll probably just wind up annoying your user. In Wondrous, when a user discovers a collectible, we celebrate that moment with an over-the-top animation. And that's fine. But if you look at most of our screens, the animations are very subtle, very simple. We want to try and wow a user with elegance, not with excess. That brings us to the end of the talk. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope it's inspired you to play around with adding more animation to your UIs. I had so much fun writing this library, and I'm truly excited to see what you do with it. If you'd like more information, please check out Flutter Animate on PubDev. There's some great documentation and a few examples to get you started. Have fun and happy animating.